Acne is estimated to affect 9.4 million people worldwide. It is the most prevalent disease and said to be the eighth most prevalent disease in the world. Acne is a skin infection that can be avoided if healthy lifestyle is taken. Avoiding alcohol and cigarettes can also be one of the main reasons for your healthy skin. But do we actually know a lot of things about acne? Today we have Dr. Balram Krishna with us who's gonna tell us a lot of facts about acne. A lot of things which we may not know or may know. So, so we start. Acne is one of the you know, like major diseases and I think it is not considered a disease also these yeah. days. It's just normal things. People can apply whatever they want and they think it goes away. But moreover or less, they don't know that acne can actually be a very serious disease that can be like, you know, Oh, that can be, you know, give you healthy skin if you repair yourself further. So as we start, what is acne and is there any difference between acne or pimple? Now see, acne is normal for a certain age group. So it's called acne vulgaris, which is the common variety of acne that happens in teenagers and that is totally normal. Having too much acne is a problem because that can leave mark and that can leave scars and that is why treatment is needed. Now, pimple is an umbrella term for any zit. Hmm. Acne is specific. Acne is a specific skin problem. But as a layman, anything that happens on uh, our face, be it a normal infection, be it any complicated uh, skin disease, if it's a zit on the skin, we call it a pimple. Most commonly, a pimple is an acne. So, I'll put it this way all acne are pimples, but all pimples are not acne. Sometimes, you know, pimples can be certain other diseases as well. But for like general public, pimple and acne are the same. Okay, so when we talk about acne, uh, when somebody is suffering from acne, they have skin inflammations. How do we like, describe and why do we have skin, uh, skin inflammations? So, see, acne uh, goes in various steps. Mm -hmm. So, first step is formation of a blanket. Wherein your skin produces oil, which is not good. But sometimes skin produces more oil than what it can secrete, what it can excrete out of the skin. That is when it accumulates inside the skin, forms a blanket or sometimes a white hair. Then infection happens in it to a bacteria called P. actinis, which is normal for our skin. But when P. actinis infects that blanket or a white hair, we develop a reddish lesion, a red pimple, or a yellow perspiral pimple. That is because of infection and inflammation. So when we talk about acne, so as you mentioned in the previous question that acne can be a black hair or a white hair, but that is more precise that we have a three different varieties of acne. What are the some major acne which people cause, which you know like are causing people, which is like novel but they should know about it. So see, so any form of you know as we discussed earlier, black hair, white hair, red lesion or a yellow lesion, but these are the smaller acne. A few blackheads are normal, which you can go through blanket removal strips or you can go to a parlor or a skin clinic and get them cleaned off. But when you have uh, too much oily skin and you're not taking proper care of hygiene, you're touching the blackheads too much, mm -hmm. then it can get inflamed, become a red and infected and become a red or yellow lesion. And that is when a treatment would be needed. Uh, when the infection and inflammation is too high, mm -hmm. This can go beyond a normal pimple and become what we call a nodular acne or a cystic acne, which are big, big bumps. Sometimes even pus filled, fluid filled, big bumps. Now, these are uh, notorious to cause skin scars, and that is why we really want to aggressively clean this. So, people who have mildly oily skin or who develop mild acne, people who have too much oily skin or do not take proper hygiene can get the more severe bumps. So when we talk about acne, uh, say uh, somebody has a really clear skin, proper health routine, health checkups, skin checkups, everything is on the perfect time and time. But still, they develop a lot of acne. I think it is called heavily acne also. And people do people uh, cause acne genetically in the families running with acne? Yeah. Yes, it's, it's, a, it's a known thing. I see everything is there. So, you know, a thin person who has you know, whose parents also faced severe acne during their you know, teenage mm -hmm. is more at risk of having again severe acne. Mm -hmm. So yes, it would be genetic, but just genetic is not the factor. It's lifestyle is also a factor as you said. The people who do not take care of their skin, uh, people not just external care, internal, which your diet is not good, 
uh, you are eating too much spice, uh, oily food, you are eating too much food which has you know, high glycemic index which leaves their sugar very very quickly, uh, you are uh, uh, smoking a lot and uh, uh, consume a lot of alcohol so this also sometimes can increase your acne. Also there are hormonal issues particularly in ladies beyond you know, 25 years of age suddenly develop acne which we call hormonal or, or adult onset acne. So that can be a hormonal issue also, the PCOD, we all know about PCOD. So ladies who have PCOD are at risk to develop hormonal acne. Okay. So when we talk about the uh, acne, so we have, like you said, the parents might have acne. So when this question is framed, so I would like, like to frame it away is, does acne worry in the gender also? ऐसा Boys, mm -hmm. so they seek treatment at an earlier age, mm -hmm. but these days we see, of course, you know, even boys are conscious for their skin, so boys also. But traditionally speaking, boys are more prone to acne because mm -hmm. boys have testosterone, they have an oilier skin, mm -hmm. and that's why acne incidence, you know, the amount of acne is usually more in boys and even more severe in boys, mm -hmm. and not just on the face. Boys get a lot of acne on their back and shoulders also, which is called tumkal acne. So you know it happens in both the gender the genders more in boys than in girls, but girls seek the treatment pretty fast. So when we talk about this, do we have a specific age group like oh, the age to sabi kyu? But the specific age group, his age me, it's very normal for people to develop acne, whether it's male or female. Yeah, teenage acne. So twelve to thirteen or twelve to nineteen years of age is the time when acne is normal. Normal. And if you have mild acne, you don't even need to treat it. You just you know maintain your hygiene. There can be some mild antibiotic cream that you can apply for these episodes of acne. But if the acne is severe, you must treat it because acne has a potential to scar your skin. See, acne now or later it will treat itself. It's a self-limiting problem. It goes away, you know, as you age. But the scars that it leaves, the pigmentation that it leaves, takes a very long time to go, very very long time to fade. Sometimes you know you have to do lasers and aggressive treatments to take care of the scars. So in those cases, treatment is very necessary. There is a question I have that some people say that they are lactose intolerant, so that might you know like affect their gut. But then some people who are lactose intolerant develops acne also if they consume a lot of milk, yes. especially in the people who are lactose intolerant yes. and then switch it to the you know yes. vegan or something. Is it something that if somebody is lactose intolerant or consuming more lactic okay. acid can produce acne into the skin? Yes, it's a new thing that the you know, few years back in modern psychology. It was considered that diet and acne are not very directly related, yeah. but now there are studies to prove that diet and acne is actually related, and dairy products particularly are linked to you no know, more acne. Yeah. So a person who has severe forms of acne, we advise them to cut down on their dairy, yeah. particularly people who are lactose intolerant, because apart from you know, uh, apart from hampering their gut health, they can also hamper you know too much dairy products can also hamper your skin health. So uh, it's, a, it's a general advice that if you're suffering from acne, you, know, you should cut down on dairy items. Okay. So when we talk about you know, the healthy lifestyle, uh, people with different kind of skins, people have a lot of different skins. So we have sensitive skin, we have combination, we have dry skin, we have oily skin, and uh, people with combination skin also face a lot of problems. So what is one basic, a, you know, a basic डायरी Because I have seen that if your skin becomes too dry after washing, it causes rebound oiliness, which can flare your acne. Mm -hmm. And dry skin also, you know, causes its own issues. Mm -hmm. So cleansing is a must. 
after cleansing hydration is also important even in oily skin even in acne prone skin we want to keep the skin hydrated because first of all it looks good and it also uh, you know it's good for overall skin health now again uh, moisturizers are different so if you have a dry skin you will use a cream based moisturizer if you have an oily skin acne prone skin you will use a gel based moisturizer which is safe for acne we call it non comedogenic moisturizers hydration and then sun protection is very important because uh, UV rays in itself can pair your acne. It can cause pigmentation. The acne marks will get darker if you are too much exposed to sun. So sunscreen is a must. But again, depending on the skin type, we have we have now different kinds of moisturizers. So now you know people who have acne prone skin, we use non comedogenic moisturizers which are not too sticky. Okay. So which we call water based? Yeah, you know aqueous based uh, huh. is what they call, hmm. and. Um, they are not very sticky. A normal moisturizer is a, a very sticky thing, but yeah. that's how the normal formulation is. The one which with the little bit very light to the skin jelly forms. Yes, okay. so light to the skin. Or also they are things called physical sunscreens, okay. which do not have chemicals in it, just have zinc oxide, titanium oxide. These are also safe for acne. Okay. So cleansing, hydration, and sun protection. These are the three basic steps that all of us must use if we have acne or we do not have acne. Whatever the skin type, these three steps will take you along. It's simple enough to do, but it will really you know improve your skin and maintain your skin quality. The products that you use will be different depending on what is your skin type. So I have read a lot of where Instagram everywhere you know like आपको इतना कुछ बताया जाता है about the skin that is, uh, you know if you have a skin on the forehead you have a different issue. If you are on a cheek you have a different issue. If you are on a chin it's a different issue. So how do we like classify on on the basis of the face? Base, yeah. yeah. So that's a very good question because see, uh, acne on different parts of the face gives us clue what mm-hmm. towards the diagnosis and why we are having that. Mm-hmm. Traditionally, if you have acne on the upper surface, upper half of the face, or all over the face, then the diagnosis is usually a acne vulgaris, which is not really any acne. That is happening because of oily uh, skin. If you have acne predominant on the lower half of the face. It indicates a hormonal uh, component. So okay. many, you know, we discuss about middle onset acne in ladies. So we have, you know, acne mostly in the lower half of the face. Okay. Third is a person who is having acne predominantly on the forehead. Okay. That means that he is using, he or she is using too much hair oil, too much oil on the scalp, which is causing acne here. Third, many ladies will have acne. You know, mostly on the side locks. Mm-hmm. So this tells us that probably they are threading in the wrong way. Uh, the hair removal is done in the wrong way, or they are wearing some kind of a scarf, which is you know, uh, uh, which is causing compre- uh-huh. compression, irritating the skin and causing acne. Mm-hmm. So these are the different clues depending on where the acne is on the face, and uh, we get a clue towards the diagnosis and thus the treatment also. So, so when we talk about water consumption, and we have seen a lot of you know celebrities or very known names people. सबके सब का फर्स्ट थिंग फॉर द हेल्दी स्किन इज हमारा वाटर कंजप्शन बहुत ज्यादा है और वाटर कंजप्शन एक्चुअली आइडियली कितना होना चाहिए इज इट लाइक एक्चुअली ट्रू दैट वाटर कंजप्शन व्हिच इज आइडियली सेट से व्हाट व्हाट 5 टू 6 लीटर्स अ डे इज इट पॉसिबल दैट सिर्फ पानी पीने से आपका स्किन इज सो क्लीन ओके सो अगेन ऑफ कोर्स देयर इज नो डाउट दैट देयर शुड बी इनफ वाटर कंजप्शन डे 3 टू 4 लीटर एट लीस्ट इन समर्स Uh, because it's important for your system uh, to keep your skin hydrated. But saying that the secret to my good skin is because of uh, because I drink six liter water may not be true. Because here the lack of water is important. The excess is not that important because body body removes that excess uh, water through urine anyways. So yes, it is good to be hydrated and it's good for your body. It's good for your skin. But just being dependent on water and just gulping you know uh, water every time. is not the secret for a good skin it's basically your genes mm. it is how you are taking care of your skin that is more important water is a factor because you're not dehydrating yourself mm. and we know that there is a thing called water toxicity mm. so you know if somebody has read that water is the secret of good skin of a celebrity you know, read more about it that to start building glasses of water because there's actually a thing called water toxicity mm. So, पर अगर किसी को कंज्यूम करना हो वाटर लाइक स्टिल हाउ वॉट इज रिकमेंडेड थ्री टू फोर लीटर्स इन डे शुड बी इनफ बिकॉज दैट्स वॉट योर बॉडी नीड्स एंड थिंग बियॉन्ड दैट मे नॉट बी एक्स्ट्रा 
but ye sirf water ke liye ya just hydrating so ju- juices can also be yeah. like a part yeah, of it yeah part of it because juice also has a lot of uh, water uh, yeah. uh, pump to pump it so fresh not, juice na no? fresh juice fresh juice yeah. not tin <laughs> tin juice is all sugar okay so when we talk about this acne uh, people aajkal bahut zyada work load work pressure study pressure say lot of pressure are there can stress also fall uh, you know like Cause acne stress can cause acne because if you ask me, there may not be any scientific evidence towards that. But we are seeing scientific evidence is one part, mm-hmm. but observation is also as important as scientific evidence. We see a lot of patients like during you know during their exams or uh, you know after an illness they develop an acne breakout. Mm-hmm. So stress definitely increases acne, not the cause of it. It basically increases acne in a person who's already predisposed to it. So you already have acne, and then on top of it, you have too much stress, so you may have more breakouts. One. You are taking less care of your skin during those times because you have more important things on your mind. Also, stress causes cortisol in the body, which can increase acne. Mm-hmm. So that's a direct relationship. But yes, what's your question? Stress may increase acne. So when we talk about, uh, uh, so now uh, after acne or somebody who's always pimping out their acne, so just full of fuss. तो उसके बाद है ना आई थिंक स्किन पे थोड़ा सा निशान लग जाता है, वो जस्ट लाइक अ स्पॉट एंड इट्स अ ब्लैकिश स्पॉट इन लेस so uh, people who think that it's a pus acne they try to burst it thinking ki ye zyada nahi bada hoga ye saaf ho jayega but i think it leaves a spot over it. so like is it recommend there is an there is a name given to it acne excoriate because some people get obsessed with their acne and start picking it all the time yeah. and that is very very counterproductive because when you're doing it yourself uh, without thinking too much you press too much mm-hmm. and you fiddle with it too much and that increases the inflammation that will ease the pus it may look better at that point of time uh-huh. but it causes more inflammation inside uh-huh. which can if we are lucky just cause a black spot but if we are unlucky and many times we are it can cause a gutta it can cause a scar and there is no treatment for a scar it will not go away itself you have to get it treated so that is very very unwanted and desired so you should not fiddle too much with your acne however there is a thing called micro drainage of the pus okay. so if you have a pus filled region and if you can do it nicely mm-hmm. uh, we do it in the clinic all the time mm-hmm. uh, but you can do it at home also you can just prick it with a very sterile needle you can't just stick any pin into it because that yeah. already has infection already has bacteria so the sterile needle mm-hmm. carefully it has to be pricked and very very gently without pressing too much the extra pus that is that is you know that can be removed easily now mm-hmm. that can be removed mm-hmm. that is that is productive But most of the time, at home, what we do is squeeze it. Hmm. That is very, very counterproductive. Okay. So when we talk about acne, uh, so see, lot of people with different different professions requires lot of makeup every day. We have journalists. We have lot of anchors. We have lot of you know air hostesses. Lot of professions which need daily makeup, not only in female but males also yes. sometimes. Yes. So, is it recommended? If say I have a acne-prone skin, but my job requires lot of makeup putting on in my face, is it uh, you know is it recommended? Ah, uh, like recommend करो कि कोई किसी को भी if you have acne-prone skin, then uh, they should be like doing uh, the makeup every day. Well, see, I, the ideal thing is not to do that mm-hmm. because putting too much makeup, as you know, will clog your pores, mm-hmm. will always secrete inside and more blackheads and more acne. Mm-hmm. But if it's a professional need, it's a professional need. You can't do much about it, mm-hmm. so you have to change the product that you're using. Mm-hmm. So you can go to mineral-based makeup, which is light on your skin mm-hmm. and is called acne safe. It's not completely safe, but at least better than a water and oil-based makeup. Mm-hmm. Also, instead of foundations, mm-hmm. uh, you can use a BB or a CC cream mm-hmm. as a as a as a base. Mm-hmm. So that is also less sticky and mm-hmm. less cloggy. Mm-hmm. So these subtle changes can be done if you have to use heavy makeup and daily use makeup mm-hmm. and you have an acne-prone skin. So these thing will help you in not flaring your acne. Mm-hmm. So uh, a lot of people uh, do not believe in lot of face washes. Or maybe just a face wash. They if they believe that they have, so many people are there who I don't think that they 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 think that So see, so acne, as we discussed, is basically a combination of uh, oiliness, mm. infection, and inflammation. Mm. So there are things in your kitchen mm. which can help in these three factors to a certain extent: mm. lemon, mm. haldi, mm. and curd. Okay. These are things which have some antibacterial properties, anti-inflammatory properties, mm. haldi, and also reducing the oiliness. So curd and uh, the lemon you know, reduces the oiliness. So you can make a make a 
DIY base mask hmm. or a cooked at home hmm. uh, with a curd ka base, dahi ka base. Hmm. We then mix a bit of haldi, a dash of lemon, not too much lemon. Don't directly rub lemon because it can be retained by your skin. Hmm. So a dash of lemon juice, uh, some haldi in a in a base of uh, fresh curd hmm. that you can apply once in a week or twice in a week for 15 to 20 minutes. So that will help in settling down your acne. That will help in uh, improving the marks of your acne and also gives a freshness to the skin. It does not replace the need of uh, you know maybe medical treatments, but for mildish acne, these things can be used. Okay. So when we talk about uh, uh, washing the face, some people have habit of ki uh, ki har do ghante mein face dhoon hai. Chahe wo normal pani se ho, chahe face wash ho, maybe you know some people have this thing face khalaab ho gaya, ganda ho gaya, bahar se aaye, toh rante face holo. What is the ideal uh, uh, you know routine for the face wash plus uh, somebody likes to wash it from uh, cold water, somebody mm-hmm. likes to wash it from hot water. I think they think cloths full time and then they can wash it easily. But what is the you know recommended face water people and how many times in the day? See, two to three times is the ideal recommended uh, frequency of washing the face. Too much washing can dry up your skin, mm-hmm. it removes the protective layer, it removes the protective oils. So too much washing is not the productive. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hot water versus cold water, I prefer cold water. Uh, hot water may, may have a bit of more cleansing effect, but this is not a cloth that has a lot of grease. This is a face which is your skin, which is anyways gentle. Mm. So hot water, once in a while is alright, but uh, too much hot water can dry up your skin. And uh, So I don't prefer using hot water regularly. Cold tap water, normal room temperature is what I recommend. And using two, I mean washing your face two to three times in a day. In certain uh, settings like you have done twice or thrice and then again you played a sport and you are too sweaty and too, you know, you know the base is dirty then of course you know, once in a while it's not a rule that team bar ho gaya, the fourth you can't do hmm. but you try to limit it to two, uh, two to three times Thank you so much Dr. So I hope you were able to burst a lot of myths, a lot of facts we would be able to clear if you still have a lot of questions you can uh, message us on Instagram and we will be able to ask Dr. again if possible. Thank you so much. Have a great day.